Hello, welcome back. So this is our first video in the series and I'm going to show you how to register and sign up for a Coinbase account. Coinbase is a company and what they allow you to do is to register and participate in the crypto market. So let's say, as you can see, I'm on my screen, on my screen here, I'm on the Coinbase website. You see that oh, there's some digital tokens listed. Bitcoin is one of the more popular ones. And so here it is, it's expensive. It's, you know, at this time, $51,000. You can see there was a price change of about 0.8%. Keep in mind that the crypto markets are open 24 hours a day. And unlike, like let's say, the stock market, and let's say in whichever country you are, that's only operate during the day when people can go um, to work, the crypto markets are 24 hours. So while you're sleeping, other people can be trading that currency and so on. So keep this in mind that, you know, you might go to bed at Bitcoin being 51,000 and then wake up to find that though it's significantly higher or significantly lower. Like I said in the intro, crypto market is very volatile. Anyway, so Coinbase allows you to take your hard earned cash that you have and you can go buy things that you can see and feel and eat. Take that money and exchange it for these digital assets. I remember these are digital assets, so <laughs> it's digital, so it's, it's not tangible. You just can say I bought a Bitcoin. If you have fifty-one thousand now, you can say, okay, I'm gonna buy a Bitcoin. But what do you have really, other than the right to say that you have a Bitcoin and there are ways in which you can store it. You need a wallet and all that stuff. And we're gonna get into all that sort of stuff later. But for now, Coinbase hides all that detail about having to have a wallet to store your Bitcoin. Because think of it, if you work and have cash, you need somewhere to put your wallet, your, your money, and so you send to store it in your wallet or your purse. Well, for, for digital currency, this concept, same concept apply. You need somewhere to store your digital currency and that is called a wallet or a digital wallet or something you may hear people call it a crypto wallet. They're all the same, it's just, you know. So just basically a wallet. And there are different types of wallets. There's paper wallet, hardware wallets, all that sort of, sort of thing. We're gonna get into those eventually. For now, we're just gonna say that so we need somewhere to store our digital currency and by opening up a Coinbase account, by opening up a Coinbase account, they are going to hide all of this. They're all creating a wallet, maintain our wallet, and they're going to maintain our currency for us in a wallet that they're going to have for us. And so once you sign up, they're going to allow you now to connect and deposit, you know, money from your bank or credit card. And then now you can use that money, US dollars in the case, since I'm in the US, I'm going to use US but you can be in any country wherever that um, Coinbase is supported. And now you can connect your financial institution to a Coinbase account, then withdraw money from there and buy any one of these crypto assets that is supported on Coinbase. And we'll see exactly which set of assets Coinbase supports. As you can see that oh, there are quite a few. Um, there. They don't support all of these that you see here. Uh, once you sign in, you will see they're just generally showing you the entire crypto market. But, you know, it's saying the market is down. But even though the market is down, you can see that certain tokens are up significantly. Like, for example, Solana is one of those that we're going to talk about um, in one of the videos. We're going to talk about how to buy Solana. And you can see Solana is generally up while the rest of the market is down. Um, and that's the nature of the crypto market. It's just like even the stock market, they might be like Google might be going up while you um, Uber or something else is going down, right? Same thing, it's just a marketplace where people are trading assets and it just turned out to be, it just so happens here, this is digital assets. So based on their sentiments or whatever they think or whatever people are buying and selling according to that. Okay. So now that we know Coinbase is a company that offers this service to buy digital assets and they manage digital assets on your behalf. When I say manage it, all I mean is they keep it. There's some other services that they offer, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. All we're gonna say is a place that they keep your wallet. They have a digital wallet for you where you can log in and you can see how much assets you own and that sort of thing, your digital asset that you bought. Okay, so let's start with the sign up. And you can see here it says signing up is easy. You'll simply put an email address in and you sign up. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put in an email address. I'm gonna hit sign up button. And then now it's asking me to put in like my full name and then of course choose a password. Now I have an acceptable password in Coinbase. You can see it 
it recognizes that I'm in a certain state. And now it says, okay, I certify that I'm 18 years of age and older and agree to the user, um, user agreement and policy, privacy policy. So I click check that box and I click create account. Now it's thinking and then it goes to this space and it says, welcome to Coinbase, get $5 in free Bitcoin after you set up your account and verify your photo ID. Now notice this, is thing, this part about verify your photo ID. So even though the crypto market is essentially not quite regulated yet, part of it is. And by that, what I mean is that um, somebody, you and I can sit down and say, we want to come up with a digital token and we can do the hard work or whatever easy work it is. It's actually fairly easy to come up with a new token. And we can come up with a new token. Let's call it BA token for best awesome token or something. <laughs> we um, And we decide to launch it. Now, once we come with a token, we just have to convince enough people to use it. And let's say somehow Coinbase is made aware that our people are loving our token and using it and they decide to put it on their market. There's nothing that's stopping them from putting our token on their market so people can tra trade it. However, so that part is not regulated. You and I can just simply come with a token, put the word out on social media because we have a ton of following and we can have people make our token popular. And then next day after we people buy into our token, we can decide that, you know what, we'll just abandon it and keep people's money. Because remember, they use real cash to buy our token. So that is why this is such a risky thing. And you want to be careful with talk, which tokens you buy. All right, that aside, that part is not regulated. Here's what is regulated. The exchanges or the places that allows you to convert cash to tokens, like places like Coinbase, Kraken, and others that we can eventually see, and some others we can see, we're not going to see all of them. There are just literally hundreds of them. Um, they have to support something called or implement something called know your customer, right? KYC, know your customer. And that means that they must be able to prove to the US government or whichever country they operate in that they know who is buying and registering to sell tokens on their network. And part of this is to so people don't do illegal activities like money laundering and all that stuff. Because once you buy, you take your fiat and you convert it to digital currency, you can send it to anyone anywhere in the world. And it's essentially almost untraceable. We're going to see later on, you can see which address has how much money and how much it's sent from it and that sort of thing. But you have to be able to tell who owns that address. And as we learn later on, you can create an address anytime you want. So it's easy for people to do nefarious stuff. And so for that reason, at the entry point to this market, which is where the exchanges are that allow you to go from fiat to digital currency, this is where they have to know their customer. And so this has been a real recent development, you know, within the past couple of years, when I first got into cryptocurrency, this was not a thing, but now they need to, you need to provide, um, verify your identity. So you have to use a government issued ID. So that's going to be either a driver's license here in the United States or something like a passport in the United States. So, okay. And while you can sign up without verifying, a lot of the exchanges will limit you to how much trading you can do. So for example, you might only be able to deposit like $100 or $200, small amount to get you started. They're not going to stop you from trading. But other than that, they're not going to allow you to make big buys. And of course, how much money you can transfer or even hold in your account, it's going to be limited. So keep that in mind. All right, so we could continue. And then it says we send a verification email to whatever address you sign up with. And it says, click that link in um, the link inside that email to get started. Once I click that um, link inside the email, and now you can see that it opened up another link to Coinbase. And it's asking me to put in now a phone number um, where they can send me um, a basically a code to ensure that I am who I say I am and not a robot signing up or anything like this. So now I have to type in a phone number where I can receive text messages. And then I'm going to say send code. And then now I have to type in the code that they sent to um, that phone number. Okay, so now I just entered the code and it um, moved to this other screen. So earlier I said that these exchanges need to know their customer. And here is that um, detail about that. So Coinbase is legally required to collect this information. They're asking you to select your citizenship. And they're saying that Coinbase is legally required to collect this information. If you're a citizen of more than one country, please pick one. So for example, I'm a citizen of the United States, so I'll pick that. So I'll click submit. And then now they're going to ask me 
to fill out this information to verify my identity. So you just fill it out as appropriate and then click continue. So when it asks, what will you use Coinbase for? I'll say for trading on Coinbase. Um, it says invest in, trading on Coinbase, trading on other exchanges, online purchase, payments to friend, online payment, business. So up to you, but I'm not an investing advisor, so I am not gonna tell you about investing. I'm gonna literally just say for trading on Coinbase. That's up to you what you choose. It's your problem. I'm simply showing you how to register account. And of course you put in your data parts and so on. What is the source of your fund? Um, of course you can choose occupation, investment, savings, up to you again, what makes sense for you. Employment status, um, whether you're employed or unemployed or whatever, again, that, that you choose what, what makes sense to you. And your social security number. So on this next, next screen, after I put in my personal information, it asks how much cryptocurrency do you expect to trade a year? Uh, what industry do you work in? So again, th this is information they need to collect. So I don't know, you pick how much you think that you're gonna be trading a year. If you're here, congratulations, you've successfully signed up for your Coinbase account and you're ready to start trading pretty soon. Of course, we have to have a payment method so it'll allow you to take your hard-earned cash or money that you have somewhere else, either in your credit card or your bank, and buy cryptocurrency but we'll leave that for the next video this video is already long enough so if you have had any, if you have any problems so far please let me know in the comments where you have a problem so i can probably see if i can figure out and leave some help for you um again remember i'm in the us if you're connected some some part of the world where i don't have access to i may not be able to help you see you in the next video where we're going to have a payment method and then we're going to be able to start buying cryptocurrencies mm -hmm.